This series is called Life Goals. 2 Corinthians is going to help us focus our conversation. In 2 Corinthians 5, Paul is encouraging the church in Corinth to be eternally minded rather than temporal minded. But he gives an example of the tension we face in being in this world or in our body, but yet desiring to be with God in heaven. And no matter where we are, what our aim should be. And this is what it says. So whether we are at home or away, whether we are on this earth in our body or whether we are in heaven with God, we make it our aim or our ambition or our goal to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. As followers of Christ, our goals should be aimed ultimately at pleasing God. We're all going to give account for what we do in this body, what we do in our lives. Goals has a part to play in this. Each week, we're going to be looking at different compartments of our life when it comes to goals. Today, we're going to be looking at health goals. Whenever we talk about health, we're talking about holistic health. I think most of us understand this and know this, but we are not just a body. There's three different parts of us. The first is our body, and it's the part of us which contacts the physical world through our five senses. Next, though, would be our soul, and that's whenever we talk about the mind, the will, and emotions. But then there's this third part of us that a lot of people really don't know much about or it feels kind of ambiguous and it's the spirit. This has to do with the conscience and, and has to do with fellowship and has to do with intuition. Conscience has to do with what is right and wrong. I believe fellowship has to do with communication and communion with God. When it comes to intuition, that's the part that it's how God imparts a sense or knowledge which is independent of reason and circumstance. Now, here's the deal. Our body affects our soul, affects our spirit, affects our soul, affects our body. Every part of us, it's like almost there's an interdependency. If I'm not healthy physically, it affects my soul. If I'm not healthy spiritually, it bleeds into every part of my life. And so we think of it in, an, in a holistic way. And, and the scripture refers to these, these parts of us. Uh, First Thessalonians 5 says, now may the God of peace, shalom, order, wholeness, may the God of wholeness himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. The word of God all throughout it speaks out these different parts of us. We need all three of these parts to be healthy and whole. I wanna ask three questions about health. Number one is this, why is health important? Everything that you do in life flows from this, this place of health or unhealth. So number two is this, what motivates you to be healthy? Here's what I think three good answers are for this question. Number one is this, to steward what God has given me. What if you were truly motivated to be healthy in life because you truly looked at your body, your soul, and your spirit as something that God has given you and you are stewarding your body? That's right. Whenever you eat or whenever you sleep or whenever you pray or whatever, it's actually the, the way that you are stewarding the life that God has given you. And, and think about how much more purpose that adds to everyday life, to every decision that you make. Wow. Is this a decision that is going to help me steward what God has given me well or not? 1 Corinthians 6.19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. As a believer, this is the way that we think. This is the way that we live. What I have is actually not first and foremost, it's not my own. We truly believe that everything that we have is from God, and so we want to steward those things well. But why? Well, I think the second answer is uh, in conjunction with this first one. To steward what God has given me and to glorify God. The very next thing that this scripture in uh, chapter 6 says, For you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. How often do you wake up today and say, God, today I want to glorify you in my body? By the way, glorify, all it means is lifting Jesus up in our life, pointing people to him, giving him credit for, for everything that we have. And imagine in the way that you live your life, it would cause people to see the way that you live your life and glorify God. The last answer to this question of what motivates you to be healthy is this. It's to accomplish the mission of God. Man, I wanna be healthy in order to actually be able to physically and emotionally and spiritually accomplish the mission that God has for me. 
There's a quote from Paul Worcester. He said this, the Christian life is not about God helping you accomplish all your goals and dreams. It's about laying down your dreams and ambitions to embrace his dream for your life. When I talk about accomplishing the mission of God in your life, the, the great commission is really the paramount thing that we are on this earth to do, per what Jesus said before he left this earth, to make disciples, to preach the gospels to every nation, the gospel to every nation, right? And that can look different in different people's lives, okay? We are different puzzle pieces. We come together. We're the body of Christ. But the aim is to accomplish the mission of God. And here's the deal. This is what I've seen personally in my own life and in other people's lives. If we are not healthy as believers, we don't have the energy, the focus, the time, the whatever to actually work on the mission of God. And I think we should let this point kind of just challenge us. Now, it doesn't mean that every single ambition you have in your life is selfish. This is just pushing up on something, right? Tapping on something. Man, what, what is this in our life? And then how are we going to actually change that? The question is, how are you going to get healthy? And not only just how are you going to get healthy, but how are you gonna stay healthy? Three quick, easy things. Number one, evaluate your health. Sit down for 10 minutes in a quiet room and just literally think about your body. Am I physically healthy? How do I eat? Then think about your soul, your mind. What is my thought life like? What are my emotions like? Am I like up one day and down the next? Do I only feel sadness and anger and I feel no other, no other emotions? Spiritually, God, where am I at? For some of you, it's been so long since you've seriously just sat down quiet and really asked God about where you're at in your spirit. Am I filled with the spirit of the world or the spirit of God? Does my conscience align with the word of God or is, am I, I kind of creating my own right and wrong? Number two, make a plan to move towards health. Try a 1% change. For some of you, you're ramped up all the time on caffeine all the time and you don't understand how that's affecting your emotions. Instead of seven coffees a day, how about one? <laughs> For some people, this sounds so, uh, oh, come on, man. Whenever you think about your body being the temple of God and you realize that you're ingesting something that's ramping up your central nervous system, which is the nervous system that God has given you, and you're abusing that thing for years and years and it's messing with your mind and therefore it's also messing with every relationship you have, it's messing with your work, it's messing with your prayer life, it's messing with you having the fruit of the spirit in your life, all of a sudden that coffee matters. Some of you, this plan looks like drinking less alcohol. How much do you drink? How often do you drink? Why do you drink? What does your spouse think about how much you're drinking? Maybe you need to back off. In your soul, man, what's, what's the plan though? What's the 1% change? For some of you, I, I really believe that there's a lot of people who they honestly, they need a psyche valve. I think they need therapy. I think they need professional help because what happens is we go through life and we, and we go through all these traumas. We have so much that's going on internally and it begins to just destroy people's lives, destroy the way that they engage in life. They have no trust in their life because they've been so hurt and they don't know how to process it. And for some people, they just try to pray through it. But you know what? If I break my leg, I can pray. But eventually, if my femur is broken, I need a rod put in my leg. I believe we should pray, but I believe that also sometimes we need to take next steps and for some of you this year, you really need to look into that. Your spirit, what's the next step looks like? Man, how about this? If you never read the word of God or pray, why don't you begin to do that every couple of days? Put it on the calendar. Start with something. Read four verses of scripture and pray and say, God, speak to me. Allow yourself to be filled with the spirit of God and you'll see your appetite begin to change in that area. But begin to pray when you're in your car, instead of listening to some random radio show or podcast, turn it off for five minutes and talk to God. 1% changes, don't overcomplicate it. Start somewhere, join a, join a group. I'm, I'm gonna talk about that again, man. Next week, we, next month, we, we start groups. For some of you, you need to be in a group with other people, right? You need to be around like-minded, like-hearted people. Community matters when we're talking about health. Make a plan, make a plan to move towards health. And number three is this, stay consistent. We have good intentions, but if we aren't consistent, it doesn't really matter that much. I wanna end by reading the scripture that I read earlier in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. We're being sanctified. We're being made more like Jesus so that your whole spirit, soul, and body can be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. All these parts of us matter to be healthy because all of this is the process of becoming more like Jesus. 
Now here's the deal. We're all broken to some degree, so we're not gonna attain perfection, but we can be perfect in Christ spiritually. We've talked about the cross. We've talked about what Jesus has done for us. And out of everything that we've talked about, the primary thing is that you are spiritually healthy, that you are filled with the spirit of God, that you are redeemed, being transformed into the image of Jesus. 